So today we are discussing air volume and how it pertains to brass playing. And I want to backtrack just for a second and review uh, trumpet momentum and really what the, the concepts are in trumpet momentum. The first is you need to gain balance. So that's number one. And that's really what we're talking about with airspeed, air volume, lip length, all the things I'll be discussing in the next few days. Uh, those are all related to finding your balance. And the reason I bring that up is because I do make the analogy in everything to something in the physical world, something outside of trumpet. And that is today, that is uh, the momentum spinning top. And the momentum spinning top spins and the angular momentum holds it upright. It is balanced when it is spinning. That's why I'm bringing this up. Uh, so finding your balance is the first step of gaining momentum. The second step really is reducing drag. And the third is picking up the momentum itself. And we'll talk about each of those, but it's going to take uh, you know, several days for us to get through the finding your balance section. And it may take you weeks, months, or even years to really truly find your balance. But when you have found your balance in your embouchure, then you can pick up your horn and play any note or any series of notes anytime you like. Then it's a matter of just fine tuning those and making them musical. So today we're talking, uh, we're discussing really air volume. Now as you play higher and lower on the trumpet, your air volume, the amount of air that is actually leaving your lips, changes. In other words, this isn't air speed, but rather if you were to gather up the air and put it in a jar, how much left your lips? So when we play higher notes, think to yourself, is there more or less air volume? And when you're playing lower, is there more or less? Uh, I'm going to grab my horn and demonstrate. So I'm going to play from low to high. <laughs> And I'm just playing very soft right now. When I'm playing low notes, my lips are doing this. And as I go higher, they create a smaller opening. So I am using more air volume for the low notes. I have a bigger opening, more air comes out. I used to play tuba and euphonium and trombone, and we would use a lot of air, and that's partially because everything is so big but it's so big because it's a bigger, lower instrument. And to play those low notes and create a vibrating surface at a lower frequency of your lips, then you needed to use more air volume and a longer lip length. So that's what I'm doing here, only on a smaller scale. It's fairly open for a low C. The general rule is simple. As you play higher in octaves, your air volume should decrease by half. Or in other words, if your air volume were say 100% on your lowest note, if you play an octave higher, it should be 50%. So low notes look a little bit like this, and less and less. You're making your lip opening smaller, and you're letting out less air volume. This goes right along with the air speed, which we had di discussed in volume two, and air speed is getting faster as you're playing higher. Remember the little piece of paper that you put between your lips? <clears throat> well, that was so that you would hold your lips at a very small opening. And that's to let out a tiny bit of air at a high note or at a very high frequency. So I'm gonna show that again. It's very small. So if I'm gonna do a two or three octave uh, lip slur, it looks like this from low to high. And if I were going to come back down, I let out more air for the low notes, less air for the high notes. So let's do that. Now I'm up to high C. A lot of people will come to me for a lesson and they'll say, man, I really want to play a high G and I can't get it. It'll be like this. and they'll hit an F instead of a G. They'll hit it open again and again. <clears throat> and they'll tell me, I've been playing this note for years, trying to hit a high G, and I always hit an F. There's something wrong with my horn. There's something wrong with me. How can I fix it? And I give them one little bit of advice that almost always works. <clears throat> Start at a high C. 
start there. And then when you get to high C, think about using less and less air as you play higher. Don't use your valves. And by just closing your lips and closing your mouth and thinking, I'm going to use less air, let less air out of my lips, then usually something miraculous happens the very first or second try. And a lot of people hit the G on the first try. Why does that happen? Most likely, they were using too much air volume for their high notes. So when they were trying to break, create that big breakthrough in their range and get to the next note, they were trying so hard that they were actually letting out more air for what they thought should be their highest note than less. And it has to be less. Because if you let out more air on your high G than your high F, then really, you're opening your lips and you're going to drop in pitch. And that is usually the basis of that struggle. Now, quickly I'm going to say one more thing about that. Most of us do that because we've seen players working really hard. You know, that kind of stuff, crazy stuff where they're like, ah, I'm going to play that high note. But you don't have to go nuts to play high notes. And you don't have to play them, you know, fortissimo. It, the trumpet is not designed, physics is not designed, the human body is not designed to play really high notes really loud. That's the exception. So if you want to play stuff really, really loud, either do it in the lower register or wait until you've actually learned to play it soft. Because playing high notes soft is fundamentally the correct way they should be done according to physics and the instrument and our bodies. Unless you want to experience an aneurysm or possibly a macular degeneration or pass out or have some other have bad headaches and eye problems don't try to play really high notes really loud play them mezzo forte whatever it is don't play it really loud that was probably mezzo forte and I'm just popping out whatever note at a lower volume if I'm gonna go on stage and play some huge thing and I'm the lead player yeah, I'll crank out a high G, but that's not what I do in my practice. It's, it's not good for your body. It's something that is the exception. So when you're going for high notes, remember, use less air volume and faster air speed. And uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you one more time the momentum spinning top and just review how important it is to find your balance. And this really is a great learning tool because if you can start to see the parallels between trumpet playing or brass playing and the momentum system, it'll start to make sense that everything in physics is related. And what I'm doing here is just winding up the string on this spinning top. And I'm not going to do too much. I'm not going to wind it up all the way because my goal here really is just to show you that when this has enough angular momentum, or in other words, enough speed, and it has been designed correctly and released properly, it will be balanced. And if I don't release this properly, it will not be balanced. So here's the spinning top, the system. And now it's spinning. I'm just gonna let it down. And there it is. It has balance. It's not perfectly balanced, or otherwise it would be straight up and down. But you want to find the balance between the factors in your embouchure to really make your embouchure work 100%. And in the momentum spinning top, that is, of course, spinning. If it's spinning upright, then the angular momentum and the balance of the entire mechanism is, is all present. It has to be balanced. And I'll discuss this in more depth in the next few videos.